Hello there, and welcome to the Remnants of War campaign in Armor 3, an experience that I'm sure you'll enjoy very much. Hello, Nathan. Sorry to keep you waiting, my editor. Where were we? Hey, um, you, you were asking about the guy, the, the one that went back there, the, the guy that, um... Ah, that's right. And did you know him well? No, not really. He worked maintenance on our trucks. He was employed by IDAP? No, no, nothing like that. I, I'm, I mean, he just helped us out a few times. Off the book stuff. Guy was a local mechanic. Family business type thing, you know? I see. I remember he had a place on the edge of town, not far from our setup. We chat from time to time. He's a nice guy, friendly. So, what do we have here? The Remnants of War campaign in Armor 3 is a campaign that is very unique. It is extremely narrative heavy. There will be a lot of narration. The voice acting is superb. And this campaign will take us... Well, it will show us how this town in front of us, Odeo Castro, a town in the remote mountains in the northwest of Altus. How it fared during the war. What happened to this town and to its people. So, and let's get started. He was going that day. To the church. He was going to church. No, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, that place had been abandoned for almost a year. But he was looking for his brother. At the church? Yeah, there had been reports of, uh, you know, pretty brutal firefight up there. He'd heard his brother might have been caught up in it. Sure, but... And I'm not quite clear on this. Was his brother still alive? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think he knew either. Seems like he was on his way to find out. So, his brother, he was in the army? Uh, yes and no. It's it's complicated. You gotta remember it was pretty chaotic back then. Mm, of course. Um, okay, let's back up a bit. Sure. What complicated the situation? Just the history of it all. His brother had been a recruit in the Altus Armed Forces, boot camp, basic training, you know? Well, this is back when NATO was still keeping the peace. But after U.S. forces pulled out, apparently he deserted. Do you know why? No, just... I know they argued a lot about it. Was he upset that his brother had deserted? Oh, no, no, he was, he was no fan of the government. I mean, by that time, very few people were. What, then? I think he was just... I don't know. Sick of all the violence. Didn't want to see his brother get caught up in all that. In what? More bloodshed. Well, since we are, we will not be really playing this guy. You say bloodshed? You mean with the gorillas? Our um, resident non-state actors. His brother had become dead set on joining the cause. I see. And that brings us to the church, the firefight. Yeah. U.S. forces were invading, the guerrillas were finally on the front foot. You can imagine the mess. I've seen the pictures. Right. It was more than just that, though. All those competing factions, people just disappear in that kind of chaos. So, what I was about to say, since we are not really going to play the campaign as this guy here, I'm going to switch to third person for this part. Yes, this campaign, very narration heavy. There will be a lot a lot of talking, but it is really well done. The story is very amazing and witnessing the history of this little town and what happened to it, how it came to be in this state, you will see that through a series of flashbacks. And I really have to give it to the developers. They put this one together very, very nicely. While playing the Eastwind campaign, we have been to this town only once, I think, raiding this building here, this clinic, for medical supplies. Here's the church. This is where we are supposed to go. This guy is searching for his brother. Let's see if you'll find him here. They're dead people. There's been fighting here. (laughs) 
every year, landmines injure or kill around 5,000 people, the vast majority of them civilians. It is estimated 110 million are buried worldwide, an ongoing reminder of past conflicts. On Altus alone, there were 7,000 landmines, a figure now decreasing thanks to humanitarian efforts. Armor 3, Laws of War. Well, the campaign is actually called Remnants of War, but I guess both titles fit the bill. We're getting a call. Hello, Kate speaking. Hey, sorry about that. Call must have dropped. The network out here is garbage. No problem. It's understandable. Are you still driving? Yeah, we're not at the town yet. Hold on a sec. Andy, we almost there. We're, uh, a little ways out. Oh, and we need to make one quick stop, too. Thanks, bud. So, um, where'd we get cut off? Um, you were telling me about the church. The landmine? The accident. Right, yeah. Well, of course, a civilian casualty like that, particularly in a church, I guess it kind of refocused our attention here. Had IDAP been particularly active in the area? Yeah. I mean, our project had a handful of camps spread across the country. But yeah, I was in the town itself for a few months. It's all different now, though. How so? Well, for one thing, IDAP used to be based right in the heart of Oreo Castro. Of course, this was all pre-war. I remember, at that time, the local military maintained a checkpoint on the outskirts of town. That was understandable. I mean, the whole area was a kind of wild west. Big mashup of civilian and guerrilla infrastructure. Disaster waiting to happen, really. I don't know. It's strange to see our camp based there now. Hey, sorry about the holdup. We're on the way now. All right, thanks, Andy. So, um, what's your role there today? Now, uh, in general, the provision of aid. There was a lot of damage, and I'd have fills the gap. Drinking water, basic medicine, post-war cleanup, in other words. Mm. And on the ground, how does that translate to your work? It's a mixed bag, like today. Part demining, part unexploded ordnance disposal. I see. All right, we are almost at the town here. Heads up, Mac. Almost there. Got it. I'm sorry about that. We're arriving now. Give me a sec. So, this all is right, us. Mac. That's your stuff all laid out here. Hold on just a sec, Kate. I need to get set up. Take your time. Right. Let's take our EOD vest. Our mine detector. And then we'll take our helmet too. So, we are being interviewed by this lady from the AAN News. And we are an aid worker working for the International Development and Aid Project here. All right then, you got everything? Detector working? You, uh, remember how to switch it on, right? Sure. There we go. Yeah, I got it, Andy. Then you're all set. Thanks. So, for now, I'll just make a note of where the mines are. Yeah, take it slow, Mac. We'll let the Bobcat do the heavy lifting later. What nice weather we have today. Right, so, where do we put this? these events into the timeline. Um, what is happening now is happening after the AAF has surrendered on Altus, after NATO has basically won. And well, there are still places on this island that are that are scarred by the war. And IDEP is stepping in to provide relief in some of those places. Odeo Castro, up here in the mountains, see where we are. We are all the way up here in the northwest. This one such place. Let's have a quick look at the timeline. So, what happened? Maybe you remember the little prologue campaign that we played. NATO peacekeepers, including Staff Sergeant Adams, conduct joint training exercises with members of the AAF. 
That was in 2034, May 10th. On the, May, or, uh, on the 15th of May, the Jerusalem ceasefire breaks down and tensions escalate. All the armed forces and anti-government guerrillas hold peace talks in Kavala. That too was part of the Little Prolo campaign. 2034, May 16, Nathan McDade, that's the guy that we are playing as right now, arrives at IDEP's camp in Odeo Castelo. Then we have 2035, July 7, the East Wind, AF launch a surprise attack against NATO peacekeepers based on Stratus. This is where our campaign with Kerry started. 8th of August, NATO invades Altus and Stratus. Alexis Kudis is last seen pursuing AAF officers to the abandoned town of Odeo Castle. Alexis Kudis is the guy that, um, not the guy that we played in the prologue, but his brother, the one that he was looking for. August 10th. Seasit withdraws support for the AAF and the government in Pyrgos capitulates hours later. August 15. Marcus Kudis returns to Odeo Castro in search of his brother. He dies after stepping on a mine, leading IDEP to investigate the region. And today we have August the 17th. We are here following that death to a mine up there at the church. Let's go and have a look at this road. Armored recovery vehicle with a bulldozer blade. Sun Myers. Ought to be drinking fucking my guys in the Pacific. I ain't using the ninja just so some latte sipping fuckwit can feel good about themselves. Oh well. Mines. Apparently, some have exploded on this road. Let's put that away. An AAF vehicle wrecked, and here we have two mines. Hey, sorry, I forgot to mention the demining toolkit. Totally forgot to pack it up this morning. That's no big deal. We're just locating the mines for now. Just keep me posted. Are you free to talk, Nathan? Sure. For now, I'm just sweeping the road for mines, getting a lay of the land. You know, the detector lets us see what we're dealing with here. I can, I can work and chat. There are a lot of mines here, and I have to be careful not to step on one. There's one somewhere in front of me here. Where exactly there? Ah, oh, there it is. And the grass. Sure, I think I could just... Question. What happens when you do find a landmine? Ordinarily, we disarm it, but today... Small oversight, we haven't got all our gear right now. Oh, it's on the way, I hope. Yeah, it's all good. Very many mines in this area. And there's a mix. These here, these are anti-personnel mines. These here are anti-vehicle mines. I can see more back there. The anti-vehicle mines I can step on. That's not a problem. The anti-personnel mines, not so much. There's one. There's no so, one. Since the war's now over, has your own world changed at all? Yeah, I guess so. Now I'm almost entirely focused on EOD and UXO. And that's something you did in the military too. Yeah. That's the thing about mines. War or not, win lose, they don't go away. Yeah, I guess that's true. The minefield that I'm witnessing here is particularly interesting because I see a lot of this. An anti-vehicle mine and right next to it an anti-personnel mine. There's another one and another one over there in the grass. Someone was clever enough to do it this way to make it very difficult to demine the area. How many minefields are you facing on Altis? That we know of? 22. 23, including whatever's here. Plus, you've got Stratus, another four over there, I think. I see. And can you estimate, roughly, how long it would take to remove them all? 
a lot of variables, but cleanup operation of this size, it, it's only IDAP. We're talking years. More mines on the road. These are anti-personnel mines. Better not step on those. Oh, the rain finally stopped for a moment. Yeah, more mines. Obviously, very obviously, the town up ahead has seen heavy fighting. Do you ever get nervous? Yeah, but not when I'm working. It, it hits you after. Or before. There's even a tank here. Well, the wreck of a tank. A leopard. From the Altus Armed Forces. More mines. More anti-personnel mines. So far, there have been only anti-personnel mines on the road itself. With some anti-vehicle mines next to the road. So far, so good. We are progressing nicely. And we are almost at the entrance to the town. Another mine. Just have to be careful not to step on these. Look at that. That does look like fortifications, doesn't it? There's so much history here. So much history that will be shown to us. Look at that. Someone wrote traitor onto that house. And someone else painted it over with the words hero. With the word hero, yeah. Right. There's the entrance to the town. So the road leading up to it? Only anti-personnel mines. Andy, I'm at the barricade. Cool. And the road? Yeah, it's what we thought. A dozen or so APs, nothing the old bobcat can't handle. All right. And here's one of the ways that the history of the town will be taught How to us. How well do you remember the town? You mean before it was destroyed? Vividly. A hey, quick tidbit for you. Oreo Castro means beautiful castle in the local lingo. Oh, I didn't know that. Do you speak the language? Not so much. Only with the older generation. Not a problem now, though. Oh? Well, Oreo Castro's pretty much a ghost town. Nothing here but remnants of war and a couple of goats. And they aren't exactly great conversationalists. The place has certainly changed a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, we can't progress through here. We have to go up here this way. Towards this house. Okay. Once again, we have something here. There. You see that? Looks like a cluster bomblet. Or something. Let's not step on. Let's not step on that, it would explode if it is disturbed. Oh, here's another scene to remember. The people here, they didn't have much love for their army. Why do you think that is? History, I guess. This place never supported the military takeover. The Kavala coup and all that. Plus, stationing troops in the town? Nobody believed the government spin about training. They were seen as an occupying force there to keep a lid on things. Yeah. But goddamn, it's in a pretty area, isn't it? Even with the bad weather, it's still kind of pretty. Okay, let's go this way. 
not step on this thing. Let's continue into the village, into the town. The houses wrecked and burned out ruins. Nobody here. Everyone is gone. There was a beautiful oak tree here once, 300 years old. Folks used it as a meeting spot. They had to pin notes for one another on the trunk. That's, that's nice. That's very nice. Really, I can only commend the developers for making the campaign this way. They have done an amazing job with these flashbacks. It's very well done. Let's continue up the road. Elias. We'll move up towards the church. Have a look up there. Oh. Unexploded ordnance or something. To... Is it in this building? Might be. Let's investigate. Oh, we can't. The door is blocked. What do we have here? Let's not step on these things. Hey Andy! Yep, what's up? What's the deal with the church? Can we get in or what? Sorry Mac, no dice. NATO's got first dibs. They're bringing their boys home. Bag and tag. Let's leave them to it. I'll come back later. Look, they're clearing out mines from the area. They're putting up little... Little flags, little markers. I wish I could do that. But they locked the area down. Can't get in there right now. The church, where the mines are, it's sealed off now. By IDAP? No, NATO. They lost some guys there in the firefight. One of their EODs is helping clear the place. But, uh... He's not exactly moving quickly. No, he isn't, I guess. Damn, this place used to look nice. Now it's all a mess. There was some unexploded ordnance in here somewhere. Let's have a look. It is... Yeah, it's definitely inside the house. The house does have a back door. There's more unexploded ordnance to our right. What do we have here? There it is. You see that? It's a tripwire. Can't get in there. Same here. Another tripwire mine. Someone locked down this entrance here. The mechanic you've been telling me about, he and his brother, they'd always lived there. In the town, you mean? Yeah, as far as I know. The family business, the garage, it kind of kept them rooted. That's the guy who will step on a mine. Right. 
Let's have a quick look at our tasks. We have an investigate task, and we have the task to, to find all explosives. What's your end goal? Uh, you know, poke around, get rid of all the bad stuff, ERW, explosive remnants of war. In Oreo Castro, that'll be landmines and some leftover ordnance. We'll continue down this road before we go into the center of the town over there. Let's first go down here. And we'll then curve around towards the center. The rain is really, really annoying. I would prefer to have good weather. Or well, I can't have it all. Really can't have it all. But look at the place. So much destruction. Buildings are just empty shells. Oh, we have something. It's there, this way. Can't get in here. What a mess. Loose rubble everywhere. You up at the armory, Mac? We need to make a note to sort that shit out. Probably a whole bunch of ordnance lying around. I'll come back later. That's the road that we walked up towards the village. And here somewhere we have... It's actually up there. You see it? There it is. Okay, we mark that. Let's continue. Without our mine detector, this would be a very dangerous endeavor. Another signal in front of us. There on the ground. Oh, look at that, another remembrance. By the way, Kate, I guess everyone there is pretty busy, you know, covering the peace talks. At AAN? Yeah. It's quite hectic, yes. We're flying out a team, actually. Should be on the ground in the next few days. Any insider info? Well, it seems likely Nikos Panagopoulos will be the new president. Really? That ex gorilla Hell, Colonel Akintero's days must really be numbered. Maybe you remember Nikos from the Eastwind campaign. He got captured while trying to deliver weapons and ammunition to the NATO soldiers on Stratus, and then was later freed by the guerrillas and brought to Altus. So he's gonna become the Prime Minister. Well, well, well. Good career from a weapon smuggler to Prime Minister. Everything's destroyed. Okay. Let's walk up the hill towards the center of the town. have something this way where is it there in the grass another bomblet no to see it Do I hear a flag waving or something like that? Sounds like something's waving in the wind. Not sure. Let's continue. Well, 
quite a lot of destruction here too. But there's another scene for us. How does IDAP distribute aid? It's a big logistical operation. Oh yeah. As the name suggests, we're an international organization. You wouldn't believe the paperwork. Supplies come in from all over Europe, end up at our depot in the Netherlands. And they're shipped out from there? Mm-hmm. Worldwide. Ground convoys make up the last leg of the journey. Though sometimes we rely on helilifts and airdrops. Another explosive this way. Might be inside the house. Let's be careful. There it is. Mm, I got a UXO here dug right into the wall. Shit. You'll need the toolkit for that job. I'll get on the horn to dispatch. See what's taking him so long. I'll come back later. All right. Let's have a quick look. We found a lot of unexploded ordnance all over the place. So there's that. Now we're going over here. Ah, another explosive. There it is on the ground. Huh. Where a camp used to be. Anything left? Not much. A few memories, maybe. Yeah, this is the location where the camp used to be. Another piece. Another explosive that way. Where is it? There, right there in the grass, almost invisible. Right. Let me walk this way a few steps and then I'll turn around and come back towards that scene over there. Because that scene over there will end this little part of the experience here. Anything else? No, we have been over there. Okay. Then let's go over there and have a look at this. We're advancing to the next scenario. Some old boxes here. Oh, that. Yeah. It was NATO that helped bring him in. Actually, it was one hell of a supply drop. Adams, he went out alone. From the way he told it, he may as well have. No, he went along with some new recruits, local bunch. It was his job to show them the ropes. So, the supply drop, this was when exactly? Right around the time we saw the ceasefire starting to break down. Must be more than a year ago now. So, at that time, your camp was in the center of town? Yeah, things were getting pretty desperate, though. I remember we hadn't been resupplied in months. No food, water, medicine. We were used to issues with logistics, but I don't know. In the end, it got so bad, U.S. forces prepared an airdrop. Not an easy task, considering, but those crates, they really were life and death. That's why we needed somebody on the ground. Someone to make sure they came down okay. And who was that? This guy. It was this guy. That's another unique thing about this campaign. It puts you into the boots of different people that influence the events in this town. But right now, let's take a quick look at our mission. It was his job to locate a drop zone. In the mountains? Mm-hmm. Needless to say, High Command always had ideas, but they weren't always good. Plus, no one had planned for those crosswinds flaring up. But our supplies were already in the air. He made a spur-of-the-moment decision. Pretty much, yeah. Although he described it with more, um, direct language. Oh, all right. 
So our job right now is to choose a drop zone. We have different ones to choose from. We have a wind direction marked here on the map, but that might not be accurate. Since I'm using the Ace mod, I should really use Ace to check the wind direction. Let's have a quick look at the briefing. We have a new entry here in the timeline. 2034, May 17th. An AAF convoy is ambushed by dissident guerrilla forces. The negotiations in Kavala collapse and the civil war reignites. Roads become unsafe and Odeo Castro is cut off from the nearest town. And right now it is May 28th, today. This event here, the convoy ambushed by distant guerrilla forces, that was the final mission of the prologue campaign. Ah, that was a long time ago. But maybe you remember, we played that. Good. Now let's go ahead and see what does Ace tell us. Ace tells us there's no wind right now. Let's get to this vehicle with a few AF recruits inside that we are taking for a ride to inspect the drop zones. Something I'm not quite clear on. Why didn't IDAP transport the aid themselves? There must have been a reason. Yeah, there was. A couple of weeks previously, guerrillas had ambushed a convoy. It was some dissident group out to sabotage the peace talks in Kravala. Anyway, NATO intervened and the whole thing just blew up. A checkpoint was hit. Protesters were fired upon at the MOD. Yes, I, I, we were there. AAN. And you know how bad it got. Our movements were limited by the government. Exactly. And convincing anybody to reassign troops, to escort NGOs, just a total non-starter. Let's drive up to Drop Zone Alpha first. Maybe if the wind really is coming down from the north, it might be a good location. For a drop. So we'll, we are going up there first. Uh, look at that pretty castle on top of the hill over there. That up there is actually the highest peak of the islands of Altus here. And to my Can great sadness, I'll, I'll tell you later. Your liaison, right? right, but Adams and I had a history. We'd, we'd met on a previous deployment. This guy was your typical army lifer. Cynical, sarcastic, big heart, pissed off with everyone, everything, all the time. And he always seemed to know where to find a beer, and was always willing to share it. Adams, you might remember him as well. You might also re what, remember what happens to him during the Eastman campaign. Oh well, we are playing as Adams right now. The drop zone. One of the drop zones available to Adams was out on the coast. Okay, let's get out for a moment and check this drop zone. So if I let him drop here. Ah, uh, look at that. The wind is actually coming down from the south. The terrain is too rough to drop supplies safely. This is not gonna work. I can tell that much already. If the wind direction is really from the south, then... Huh. Then what? Then Charlie might be a good place. If the crates are blown north a little bit, they might still drop in the clear because I believe I can tell the pilot from which direction to approach the drop zone. So if I let him approach east to west, the crates will drift a little bit north, but they will still land in the clear. Yeah, let's go and check out Charlie. Good draft down there. You mentioned something about the breakdown of peace talks. The situation blowing up. What happened there? From your perspective. Well, for one thing, the change in the peacekeeping mandate came out of the blue. We heard the pressure came down the pipe from CSAC. They had the leverage. You mean it was in their interest to kick NATO off the mainland? Maybe. Certainly the government had become frustrated with NATO and vice versa. I suppose they blame NATO for their, what, more sympathetic approach? Hearts and minds, Adams used to tell me. But the others said they just didn't have the guts for it. 
couldn't do what needed to be done. Yeah, the AF were pretty heartless bastards. Uh, what was I about to tell you? Oh yeah, to my great sadness, um, there unfortunately isn't a nice, big, beautiful castle on top of this mountain in real life. And some of you might not know that, but the island of Altus. If you want to be fascinated, have a look at this, and now go to Google Maps and look up the island of Lemnos in Greece. It's pretty much a one-to-one -one copy, but some places are changed from the real-life example, like that castle that's added. I think in real life there's a military installation up there. Also, I think that in real life the town of Odeo Castle is uh, non-existent. It's... I did look it up once. I think it's a military installation. A military base up in the mountains. Maybe a listening post or a radar station, something like that. In game, it looks breathtakingly beautiful. Okay, we are now going down this road, which at this point in time is not mined. And I really like that about this campaign how it gradually tells to you and unveils to you how everything happens and how it came that the town became what it is in the end. How that came to be this beautiful little town behind us. What happens to turn it into a pile of rubble, deserted by its inhabitants? What happened to the inhabitants? We will find out. I think I need to turn left here. Yes, I do. Right here. up the road from our encampment, there was a small farmstead. Forest drop zones when it was as good a spot as any. Doesn't look too bad, actually. You know what, let me switch off the engine. And we'll take a look around. First, let's take a look at the wind. Yeah, it's blowing from the south. Towards the north. So, let me think. If I let the plane fly in from that direction then everything will be dropped on this hillside it might even drift into these woods beyond which would not be ideal if I let the plane fly in from the northwest towards the southeast how gradually can I decide the supply drop Okay, so if I let it fly in from the west towards the east, then everything will drift towards the north a little bit, but the area looks to be quite clear, so I don't know, that should work. Disembark. Guys, get out. Ready. Stretch your legs a little bit. Ready. Stop. I'm gonna take a look up the road. No, we're letting, we are going to call it in. I think this is actually a good drop direction. Yeah. Supply drop. Fly towards the east. Once he called in the airdrop, that was it. They just had to sit tight. Hope for the best. One thing I don't understand. What were they doing there, all the way up in the mountains? The town. Oreo Castro. This place has historic ties with the guerrillas. For years, people here would provide them with food, water. I see. The government responded by draining the swamp. And that involved sending soldiers? Yeah, coin ops. Adams and his guys were there to remind them of their R2P. Just a sec, I'm getting a bit lost in the lingo here. Hmm? Oh, gotcha. Uh, R2P is their responsibility to protect. Counterinsurgency can get real messy real quick. He was in charge of training. Laws of armed conflict, that kind of thing. I'm waiting for the plane. 
it should approach from that direction. Adams Can normally tossed out an smoke? orange smoke grenade, which marked his position for the pilot. There we go, smoke has been deployed. Now we wait. Smoke is building nicely. There it is. I saw it for a moment. There it is. Yeah, yeah the pilot should see this. Damn, he's, he's too far north. Oh, that's not good. Let's have a look. Sir, these crates, were there a lot of them? No, just four. One contained medicine, another fresh drinking water, the rest were packed with rice or grain. Adam said to inspect each one individually. Later, we'd arrange collection. Well, so far, so good. It's looking like a good drop, actually. Let's see how the crates are landing. We have one landing there, one over there that's tipping over. Looks okay. There's another one landing over that way. Hopefully not on the house. No. Looks fine. And one landed over here. Leventis, Leventis you come with formation. me. Copy that. Let's inspect this. What do we have here? Rice. Thankfully, the rice seemed okay. There you are. You know, the AF's camo pattern actually is really good as long as they are inside a wooded area. It's very subtle. When they are out in the open like this in an arid field, not so good. But inside a wooded area, really damn good. And there's the next parcel. What do we see? Sex of grain. It wasn't uncommon for the sacks of grain to split on impact, but that time, we got lucky. He didn't lose a single one. Okay. Let's go and find the next one. The one that tipped over. I hope its contents are alright. I hear something. Whoa. Down, 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 down. Smoke, noise of the plane, the brightening parachute, and we're in the middle of end. That's a problem. We got visitors. Fall back. Everybody, fall back to this farm here. Fall back to this farm. I don't know what else will arrive. Leventus, take a position on that corner. Petros, to that wall. Gekas, to that wall over there. I hear another vehicle, I think. Shit, we lost one. Cover me, reloading. I think a vehicle is appro Yeah. Stand vehicle approaching left side. Got them flare. Uh, smoke grenade, I mean. No idea if I hit anything. Because of course just at that moment a huge amount of smoke wafted in my face. 
Gekas, come this way. Don't go out there alone. Let me inspect this crate. Hopefully the smoke when it peters out then. The medical items, you can imagine how pleased we were to see those arrive. So they landed safely? Yeah. Yeah, they were fine. Did I hit him or did he get out? No idea. One hundred meters front. Okay, cause that's you. Okay, you two, Stop. hold your positions. Let me inspect the last crate. Here it is. Yeah, that's what I feared. Contacts. From somewhere. I don't know who took a shot at me. I just hope it's not a sniper. Soldier! 300 meters southwest! As I recall, the bottles of purified water were fine. We've been waiting on those for weeks. As for the crates, they still needed to be checked before anyone else arrived. I can't... Up there, on the road. I was about to say, I can't tell from where the shots are coming from. But it's coming from up the road. Okay, one of my guys went inside the building, which is fine. Got that guy. Now is there more? Can we hold this position? Not sure. I'm not even sure that everyone up there who was at the there's one at the cars. I do have an AG grenade. Short. I don't have another one. God damn it. Let's try to keep that guy away from the 50 cal. The gorillas attacked. Yeah, from what I heard, it was pretty intense. I don't have the numbers, but maybe six or seven were killed. And what happened when the supplies had been secured? Adams would fire a flare. So we got them all. Get okay, this all right. So we lost one guy. Yeah, I think he's next to our car over there. He got called out in the open. Well, in my bed, really. Oh, I do have more AG grenade rounds. Did I miss that? Well, alright. The flare is already loaded, so let's fire it up into the air. And... Signal that we secured the supplies. There we go. Supply secured. Back at the camp, of course, we'd heard all the gunfire, but that flare, when we spotted it, I don't know, felt like finding a moment of hope or something. Sure. I can only imagine. And thanks for sharing. It puts a, I don't know, a human perspective on my work. Speaking of which, your friend, do you think he'd be willing to contribute further? Even, you know, off the record. What with the topic of my article? Having an expert, an instructor on the laws of war... It... Look, I'm sorry. I, I know he'd help out however he could, but... Listen, he died on Stratus. A year and a bit later. Landmine. Yeah. 
So, that was the first part of the Remnants of War campaign in Arma 3. I do hope that you have enjoyed today's episode, and that you will join me next time when we continue this fascinating campaign. This was a bit of a slow start, with lots of, um, talking, <laughs> but things will heat up from here on out. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on the further developments, and I am really looking forward to seeing you again next time when we continue this amazing experience. Until then, have some great days and goodbye.